there was an um, a proper outcry uh, to a point that we weren't even expecting to have you in in, in the yeah. world through COVID. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I mentioned at the start, but this was a real serious time where everyone was thinking, "Yo, cult, pull through." Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, it was deep. Yeah, I've never, I've never. I mean, I wouldn't wish this. I wouldn't wish what happened to me on anyone. But um, yeah, it was a really. Um, I, I technically I shouldn't even be here. Killer, killer, podcast. KillerKellerOfficial.com You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Yo, Nolan Poland Records for underground classics. NoPolandRecords.com Fox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street cultures. Killer Keller podcast. It's about that time, time. Here we go. Oh, he's a fucking dick. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast, live and direct, central London, or as central as you need to be. You don't want to be anywhere else, trust me. Leagues ahead of any other day, uh, job of your day, we are here to service you in the world of street culture. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk, hold tight to strangestation.co.uk, no Poland records for those instant classics. Um, that's uh, .co.com actually, um, hold tight, no in Poland. And if you've got a television app, you know the deal, it's free download, iPhone, Android, for all your sport and art street culture business. It's there 24 seven. And what a pleasure. My day is just getting better. Um, he's, he's rhyming. Um, <laughs> I have a gentleman to the side of me, uh, your left, my right. Um, I've got to tell you, we're talking legacy here. We're talking uh, Muddy Funksters. We're talking early b-boy in the robotics. We're talking Covent Garden. We're talking graffiti. We are talking to the man who survived COVID, the awesome Colt 45 inside the place. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> that was, that was, that, yeah, it couldn't be more on point, right? Uh, this, we, we're dealing with some legacy here, bro, aren't we? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and tattooist, I might add as well. Yep. Yep. Cool. Damn. Yep. This is this is somebody that I get the impression likes to fill his time creatively. Like Yeah, I'll do, yeah. Overachieving. Uh... Let's talk, <laughs> let's let's set it off here. Yeah. Talk to me, talk to me. Right, okay. Um well well, hobby wise, um a graph. Um, I make music. Um, I DJ. Yeah. Um, as you said, like you know the the the, the tattoo inside. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I got I got quite a few hobbies. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 The, the the creative outlet that I think hip hop brings, particularly to the youth culture of the day, even now, is sizable. That you can adapt any skill set. Mm. That you can you can do creatively into it. That's correct. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. And I would say probably when it first landed back in the day, as you being the first the first of the generations to receive it, that must have been mind blowing. It it was just I suppose it's like as you said, like the equivalent of like a, the punk era. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like when it like I, I remember because like my, my you know my my mum was heavily into reggae, mm-hmm. and I remember when. When I first heard, back then it was called jazz funk, but now it's called soul. But when I first heard it, I was just like, wow, what the hell is this? Mm. But then when I heard hip hop, it was just like, it completely blew my mind. I was just like, what the hell is this? I've I've got to be part of this. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, it, it, it was just, it was just wicked. And, and, and it just brought, for me, it just, it, it went, for me, it was like going from BMX in, to that, damn. Yeah, and and it it, it it just it just opened up doors. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, because there was a social aspect as well, and you know, and just to add further value to cult and and, and the, the 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 gravity of his output. I mean, you you really are a bringer of community. You 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 love interacting with people. There must have been nuts to have 
you know, Covent Garden, all of a sudden, you're not the only one that is doing this shit. Like, people are doing it and it's becoming a thing and you're able to meet people. Yeah. That must have been crazy. Yeah, it was. I mean, I'll tell you what was quite mad. It was um, um, I, I, when I started doing the barbecues. Mm. Like... The it legendary was... barbecues. <laughs> Hold tight, UK. This is the hip-hop barbecue of hip-hop yeah, barbecues every yeah, year. Yeah. And um, I've had people come to my barbecues that don't know me. So when they walk through my gate, they're like, yeah, you're right, Cole. And it's mad because I, I know who they are. I've been around them. We've got loads of mutual friends. Mm. And then when I go to speak to them, they'll be like, rah, what, you was there? And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember it. But if a particular event I, we speak to them about, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Well, I speak to them about And they're like, wow. Yeah, yeah. You know, I just, I just it's, it's just mad. I just, as I said, man, it's... It, I, I love meeting people and I love what's it called uh, interacting. Do you know what I'm saying? And I lo- and I love hearing stories as well. Mm. That to me is is just wicked. I love, you know, not just about Covent, just about hip hop in general. Do you know what I'm saying? So it, it listen, I could be in Manchester, Liverpool, mm. Birmingham, wherever. Do you know what I'm saying? And when if I hear anything to do with hip hop or or what they're about, that you know, in their scene, in their time, that that interests me. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah, I like that. It's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Mm. It's the connectivity of the whole culture, um, and you know, once you find y- your entry hole of yours was breakdancing and robotics, yeah, right? Yeah, this was yeah, the, robotics. the first things, yeah, yeah robotics Crazy. and breakdancing, yeah. Crazy. I had a little little crew, um, and as I said, we went. It just it just it was a natural progression. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? From from the robotics to the breakdancing, and um, yeah, I just, oh, I just loved it. And as I said, we we you know we had, back then we had youth centres, mm. so every area had their youth centre. So I went to where I lived. I lived in my rivalry school area. So the youth centre that I went to was literally around the corner from my house. This was South London, right? This yeah, yeah, yeah. This is uh, this is Streatham. Yeah, Streatham, old yeah. type South London. You know what it is. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is Streatham. So. I remember the first time I, I went into um, the, the the youth centre. It was it's called Conyers. Conyers. Um, my granddad used to live on the road, so I used to always go to his house every Sunday religiously. Um, and then I remember going past, thinking, "What's that? It's a youth centre, right? Okay." And then one day I thought, "You know what? I'm going there." And I remember bowling in there with uh, with my feeler tracksuit. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And just bowling in there, <laughs> and they were like. What's he doing in there, man? He's a bevin boy, man. Like, but then they're going, yeah, but he's from the manor. So he's like, right, okay, cool. So I, I, I got the pass to come in. Do you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But um, yeah, it was just, and then from then onwards, it was just like I, I used to practice everywhere. If I didn't practice at school, I'd even go to the rivalry school and practice there because obviously there's people in my area that I used to move with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That used to go to the school. So, and if not, I'd, I'd go and practice at uh, one of my friend's house who. Um, He's, 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 a, he's a well-known drum and bass DJ. Nice. Um, yeah, so uh, he, he was mad. He used to have, like, he, his front room, he had, it was it was so funny, man. So his front room had, like, a massive bit of lino. Who's this DJ, but before we go any further? His name is um, Younghead. Younghead, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 DJ Younghead, man. He's um, he's a legendary drum yeah. and bass DJ. Brought up by by the by the, by the, by the elite in the yeah. drum and bass scene. So, so he, we, he, we used to go to school together. He was a guy that introduced me to my first break tape. Wow. Yeah, at school. <gasps> so I remember he came in one day and he went, oh man, I've got this tape. And I was like, what is it? And he goes, listen to this, all right? And it was Whiskid. Oh, right? shit. Right, cutting up Black Grass. Yeah, yeah. Eamon Brothers. Wow. I Can't Stop. And um, <sighs> so he's put this tape in here, right? And at this particular time, I was into electro. Yeah. So, Never really heard about cutting up breaks. Mm. So when I remember, he put this tape in here, right? And the song that stuck out to me the most, yeah, right, was was Black Grass. And the reason why that song stuck out so much was when, and if anyone knows what I'm talking about, they'll, 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 they'll catch on to it straight away. Google that shit. You know right? what to do. Put the comments and the links and all that. Yeah. Right. So this particular tune, when you first play it, it sounds like a Barn the yard kind of barn dance yeah. sort of song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah the yeah, beginning, yeah, yeah right? Crazy, yeah. So he cuts up the beginning bit, yeah, right? And then all of a sudden, he cuts up the break bit. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what the hell is... I'm like, what yeah, the yeah. hell is this? Yeah. So we just started breaking to it. Do you know what I'm saying? 
And I was just like, wow, I'll, I'll, I'll never forget that day. But anyway, back to, so I used to, so we used to go good. around to Younghead's house anyway. Mm-hmm. And um, he had his front room and his mum used to come in and he'd be like, mum, man, we're breaking, we're breaking, man. Do you know what I'm saying? Just leave us alone. And he took over the whole front room, massive bit of lino. And we just used to go there and practice. Do you know what Whoa. I'm saying? Yeah, as well as school. It's yeah. crazy. It's yeah. crazy. Robotics as a as a by design, it does what it says on the tin, but when it when it's done right, mm. yo, the levels are cra- it's a it's a it's a genre all of its own, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's wicked, man. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah man, I feel it's like it's, it's the kind of thing you never really stop learning with with robotics. It's, it just feels like you're it, it's 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 unrestricted. It's your imagination where you want to go with it and how you mm. apply it in it, with objects, with yeah, with with intention of it, well, I mean, no. you know, from robotics, it's, it's gone on to um, popping, mm. locking, um, and as I said, you know, it, it, it's all part of the hip hop dance elements. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. So yeah, and I, yeah, man, I used to I, I, I used to enjoy practicing. Well, this know? is a street culture podcast. It goes without saying at Cult Forty Five. Uh, yeah, he's synonymous with a spray can, and uh, he done his thing. Um, and uh, a lot of you will know about this because there'll be a lot of you watching know full well that the stories were about to unfold in some of this graph, <laughs> some graph talk. Um, yep. When did you start writing, brother? I'd probably say about eighty three. Um, yeah, probably mid eighty three, definitely. Yeah, yeah. and um, you know, like pretty much everyone else. We got into graph, and um, and obviously subway art. When that came out, yeah. that was like wow. Yeah, that was like a, yeah. you know, I, I remember the day that I saw that book. Mm. I was around um, Prime, mm. Prime, Prime's house. Yeah, big from, up Prime. From, yeah, big up Prime, and Crime was there. So me, nice. Prime, and Crime were sitting wow. there in his house, and we've pulled this book out, and it's subway art, and we're like, oh my god, and we're just. We're studying this book like it's the Bible, man. Mm-hmm. Like it's like we're religious, mate. We're trying to take as much as this information as possible. And I just remember opening up, just thinking, "Wow, look at this!" On trains as well. And I'm like, "Oh man!" And we were just <laughs> freaking out. And um, as everyone goes through the, it's almost like everyone, man. I don't care what no one you know, says, man. Subway like art is the Bible. Yeah, 100. that's it. Done. Do you know 100. what I'm saying? Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> And, and and that was it, you know. That was that. I would say that's most people's inspirations. You know what I'm saying? Good question. Yeah. So, um, literally, everyone kind of, I think everyone kind of obviously looked at that, and obviously there's going to be a bit of copying and stuff mm. like that because you know it's 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 an art form that's come from America, mm. you know, and then everyone's kind of gone on and honed their own style, mm. and. And you know, went on to go and you know, went on to go and develop their own style, mm. you know. And um, as I said, you know, well, I'm about to say, like from then onwards, we were just painting in our area, so that's how it kind of we were just doing wall pieces, and that's how it kind of started. And then, um, and eventually, we went on to trains. Now, mm. that was interesting because where I lived, so we had. In our actual area, like pretty much in the radius of about five miles. So the main graph guys that we used to go around with, so there's bit, there'd be me, Prime, Crime, Devil, Sham, <sighs> Deck 20. Um, wow. Who else? Uh, da, 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 da. Pop Rock. Um, we'd see Skip, because he lived in the area as yeah, well. yeah. yeah. Um, and if you don't know about the go rockinthecity.com, you'll find all these heroes all accounted for on that standard. website. Yeah, yeah. You know. there's, there's, there's loads of other um, artists as well, mm. but they're the guys that we used to go around with. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. And uh, we used to all, we used to all like congregate up into the Devil's house because Devil had like um, techniques in his house as well. So we would go up there, everyone would be smoking. <laughs> Drinking tenants, mm-hmm. do you know what I'm saying? Tenants in the yeah, can, mate. yo, yeah. that's old school. Uh, old school, man. Proper. Yeah, so the tenants, and then we'd be up there, and then we'd be just cutting breaks up and just chatting about graph and doing sketches and stuff like that. And yeah, that's that's how we used to roll back then, do you know what I'm saying? There's nothing better than, I mean, this is a new revelation for me, because, you know, I dabble a little here and there on, on the old painting just to cut my chops for ready for conversations, you understand? Mm. Um, but the best conversations and the best times I have 
in this writing thing mm. is when I'm just sitting in a room bullshitting and just sketching with another yeah. person yeah. or listening to music jamming. Yeah. Like that shit is, it's, it's, it's a real snapshot of like what the fuck, you it's, know? That's, that, that was standard. It's beautiful. That, that was standard. Do you know mm. what I'm saying? Yeah. If you if you had like, like-minded people, that's what you do. You'd go around, there'd be one particular house you could go around that you could get away with it. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. Most people's parents back then weren't having a bar of it. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? But you'd get the odd parents that were a little bit relaxed. A bit more liberal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you could go around there and chill and, and, and Devil, Devil's house was that house. Do you know what I'm saying? You immediately so. get kudos. That's like that's yeah. like being a member of a band and only in the back line. Yeah, all of yeah, a sudden, yeah, yeah. like you're everyone's homies and like yeah. you're, you're all around the back of the house there. Yeah, that's hard. Yeah. So, yeah. We were, we were, we were like, they end up, what's it called? Uh, it was called the hom- homelays. Mm. That's it, the homelays, that's right. And I, and I remember we just we used to go around, as I said, we used to go around there, just graph practice and stuff like that. Prime's house, we used to go around quite a bit as well. His mum was quite, I don't know how, but his mum, his parents were quite relaxed, you know what I'm saying? Man. Like, if we'd come back from yards and stuff like that, we'd be able to stay around his house, which was mad. So. Wow, so they'd know you'd gone and done it. And they, and just... Nah, 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 they didn't know what we was doing, but like, they knew they was out, yeah. but they might have just thought we were just out. I don't know, partying or stuff like that. But we were, we were just coming back from yards, do you know what I'm saying? Mm. So, yeah. How did, where did the, um, where did the name, I've got guests here, there's a fly around doing my food. <laughs> um, we, uh, uh, we know he's Colt 45. How, mm. what, was, what was your, how did you get to that point um, of a name? Were there others, were, there, were you writing other yes, names? Yes, 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 yes. So, before Colt 45, I used to write Lace. And, um, and basically, what happened was, I was thinking, do you know what? I need a really strong name with, like, substance. Mm. And so, as I said, I was just going through the motions of, of grafting, do you know what I'm saying? So mm. I'm writing this lace, and then one day I bumped into another another legend called Crash. <sighs> oh. Right? Hard, yes. So Crash was a very influential writer, mm. as well as the Artful Dodger. Mm. Yeah, for sure. So them two guys there... Were, were pretty much the, the main guys that would... From South especially, from South, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, from like Tooting, Tooting Beck, Hard. like back to Ballum, Clapham. So their, their two um, tags were really stood out the most. Yeah. And um, Crash was a friend of mine um, who used to go to my school as well. And um, one day I remember um, I was getting a few uni-wides, uh, markers from, mm. um, from the States. I was getting them imported from the States. Rare. And, um, they were, mm. Back then, they were rare. Do you know what I'm saying? So mm. I got like, I got like three uni wides and um, three minis, and I was just buzzing. I was, mm. I've got these pens, and I'm thinking, oh, well, don't I touch it. It's mine. It's mad. I've <laughs> actually got, I've actually got two brand new ones at home. That Have actually, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Envy, Envy hooked me up. Oh, about, uh, about ten Come years on. ago. Love Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I've got two, two Beautiful. brand spankers at home, mm-hmm. and um, and I remember Crash was like. Oh, where'd you get them from? And I was like, oh, I've got my little, I got a contact who's been to the States, blah, 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 blah. And Crash at the time had a few different names that he was kind of like, um, I suppose they were kind of like aliases, aliases, aliases. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. Crash obviously is his alias, but he, he had like a couple of little names that he used to toy around with. And um, the two names he had was Mag 44 and Colt 45. So. Uh... I was going to him, yeah, man, I, I like the name Colt 45. And he's like, yeah? He goes, I'll tell you what then, yeah, right? Hook me up with a uni wide, yeah, right? And we're all good. And I was like, yeah, go on then. <laughs> if only the world was so simple. I know, I know, I know, I know, it's I know. It's amazing. That, that is the story of how I got the name. Do you That's know what I'm fantastic. Saying? I love it. What and a then, story, man. And then the mad thing Beautiful. was, my mate um, who lived um, also in South London, he ended up having the Mag 44. He was another guy that used to come up to Dean's as well sometimes. Yes. So yeah. So, so wow. then that was it. That was the, that was the beginning of Colt Forty Five. Because I wanted a name that had, I wanted a name that was short, and I wanted to have a name that had a number. Because most most gra- you know most graph mm. artists have got a name and a number. Mm. So if you couldn't get your name up quick enough, you just put a number up. Just put a number, up. and then everyone knows you know it's you. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like one four seven. That's it. Like the crew yeah, around yeah, here, yeah. you know, same yep. shit. You know, it's like yep. the num- There's something about having a number it's real it's a real statement it's I, I feel like people that even now have their name with numbers in it it's almost like it's, it's an ode to the old school a lot more isn't it yes yeah, it's, it's, I, I think it yeah with old school it was just a standard thing I think you know it just come from the states isn't it you yeah, know like, yeah. like most of the graphers out there they had names and numbers and it was the same sort of same sort of principle as well if you couldn't get your name up mm. 
you'd put the number up, mm. you know, so... Um, Very cool. So, so for me, that was perfect. That name was absolutely perfect for me. And then yeah. from then onwards, that was it. I just rolled with it. I think with Colt 45 as well, is it's a name... Um, it, 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 it suggests a name that you need to know, or you, you may have heard it from somewhere. It sounds... It could be a rapper. It could be a DJ. Yeah. Colt 45, it just sounds like... It could be a fucking... German beer, you know what I mean? It's, it has it has a it has a real or weight to it. American one. Or American, it has a weight. It has yeah. a weight. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's got a weight. It's got a weight to it, hasn't it? Yeah, it's it's, it's yeah. It, it's got a it's got a, a kind of half powerful kind of name about it. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? And um, like an engine. <laughs> yeah, it just. I just like the, the sound of it, and I just thought, yeah, I'm definitely going to go with that. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, and, then, um, and then that was it. It just just that that's that was the beginning mm. of the name. Yeah. Um, we'll get back into the recesses a little bit here because, mm. you know, I was, I was way too young. Um, what we're about to talk about now, do not try at home. I'm warning you, people die from this shit. Um, so don't be one of them. Because uh, at the time, graffiti and the trains and the places where you can go and play, it was pretty low-hanging fruit, wasn't it? Like you could literally walk over a fence and, and you're yeah. in the... That's that's yeah. insane to think that from, compared to nowadays. Well, you know, obviously with like now you've got the terrorists and stuff like that, you yeah. just... Oh, the security level is just. I don't know how off people do scale. it. It's fucking mad. Do you yeah. know what? I re I respect the guys nowadays, man, yeah. that, that get to do trains because you know what? I envy them. I'd love to. I'd love to do. I'd do a train now. Does it ever leave you that feeling? Nah, never. <sighs> Seriously, I would do, listen. If I had an opportunity to do a train, I would do one. Really? Yep. It has to be a whole car though. It couldn't be anything less than that. That's you know what? Give me because that yeah. is something that the old school always say. Mm. None of this. You know, panel downs. None of this. It has to be whole because there's a, um, it it it, it, uh, it uh, the intention is that. Yeah. And you guys grew up on that, yeah. so that's literally what's the point of doing anything else? Well, you know what? It's <sighs> this is old school, by the way. Yeah, I, I, I do get that. Yeah and no, year and no, because like sometimes, as I said, like when you know the trains that I've done, like I've done whole cars, I've done just a piece. Mm. Um, I've done window down. Window downs are the best, man. I love. I love to see it in some inside. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah, yeah. I mean, like it's shit. just it, you know, for me back then, it was it didn't really matter. Like mm. it mattered, obviously, if you done if you done like whole cars and stuff like that. But for me, it was just getting in there and doing something mm. and getting out. Do you know mm. what I'm saying? And again, just you know, saluting the uh, uh, rockinacity.com, like some of the most priceless. For future Ford creative whole cars and pieces that were done with such limited amount of tech within oh my god paint. It's, it's insane like, bro like when you compare like the paint of today even the nozzles mm. are, are diff complete different gravy i mean like yeah. we, we used to we used to use, we used to use things like rubber ducks yeah yeah yeah, yeah like yeah, yeah. that's that's a paint that you spray for the floor <laughs> do you know what i'm saying <laughs> But them things were proper stainers on them trains. Do you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And 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 when I think about the, the car plan and stuff like that, stop like, that leak and stop things that like that. Leak. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Like mad. That is crazy. Do you know, super what I'm saying? creative. Like, how, mm. how did you come to the conclusion that that a would, would, would work? Be possible? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know who it was, but like you know, a few people who obviously you know saw the paint used it and thought, you know what, that works and, and just filtered it out to everyone and everyone was like, yeah. yeah. And I suppose it was, back then it wasn't, you know, it, things like that were were very easy to get. So, you know, when I say easy to get, what I mean is easy to steal. Mm. <laughs> so, um, mm. it's just quite mad now, like nowadays. I mean, it took me ages to get, have the concept in my head of actually going to go and buy paint. Yeah. That took me ages to get my head yeah. around. You're not the only one. I think I, I, yeah. I, I, even... To the degree that I spoke to Zombie about it, yeah, and some of the other shops. Listen, on mate, they, 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 listen, everyone. I, I there ain't no one I don't know that don't feel that. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? The, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Because it was like for me, it was like. First of all, you've got to look for. You've got to find shops. Mm -hmm. Then, when you found a shop, you got to make sure that like, it, you kind of try to keep it to yourself. Mm. But sometimes, obviously, you know, if you, you've got a few people that are cool, they'd say, yeah, man, yeah. you know, I'll take you to a spot where we can go and rack. Do you know what I'm saying? And and most of the shops that, you know, once all the shops in London got rinsed, then it was like it was time to go out of town. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? To all the little little places on, on the outskirts. And it was a few, there's a few areas that were that were kind of like famous for mm. 
going to rack, rack in pain. One thing that Duster said on um, podcast, Big Up Duster, is he said that there was a period where, like you say, you're very choosy on who you bring to the, 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 the places you yeah, want, you rack at. And he was saying, you know, like, he would go into this one place and he'd bring a guy he thought was cool. Mm. There would be some, you know, um, uh, traffic light yellow yeah. paint or something. And he'd take a couple because he didn't want to overdo it. That's right. But then the next day he'd walk in and the dude yeah. that he was with took the whole lot. And That's next right. thing it's hot. Yeah. It's hot. Yeah. Uh, have there been, place did, you, did, you, were there, did you ever see any penalties for people that did that back in Every, the day? You know, it's just human nature, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You just, the, the thing is, you go into a shop and you want to try and get as much as you can or or try and get what you need for mm-hmm. a specific project you was mm-hmm. doing. Do you know what I'm saying? But there were some shops, like I, I remember going into um, CJ Graphics mm-hmm. and I remember going in there. Back then, the head bag, there was a head bag and the bag was like the biggest bag you could get. <laughs> and I remember going in there and just literally just, just, just pouring <laughs> straight into the bottom of the, what's it called, into the bag. Yeah, yeah. Literally lifting that bag out and just walking out. Do you know what I'm saying? Yo. And, um, that's how it was, you know. Some shops, some people would, would, would show it a bit of respect because they know that they can go back there and they can and they can rack the paint, mm-hmm. you know, and, 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 and get away with it. Mm. And then, as you said, like some people would, would be shown a certain shop and then they would just tear the backside out of it. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Which which then hots it up for everyone. Yeah, and then so, you can't... Yeah, then you can't rack it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Man, it's, it, it still blows my mind that this this occupation that is involved in graph and how it is all-consuming. I don't think contemporary art, I don't think um, Joe Public, I certainly don't think security and the powers that be really fully grasp mm. how much how much this as a culture takes it's all consuming it takes mm. over your life doesn't it yeah of course and that that we we didn't really care about anyone else really we were just interested in our own peers so we didn't care whether you whether you whether you used, whether you liked it or not it's only our peers we was interested in mm. do you know what i'm saying mm. so but I don't know, man. It was just, it was just the buzz. Mm. Like for me, it was like the buzz of like literally racking paint, doing outlines, mm. figuring out where you're going to go that particular night, who you're going with, like what she do. If, like when you rack your paint, should we go and plot it up at the at the place that we're going to go and what's it called yeah. um, paint? Yeah. Should we put it somewhere else? St- stash it at someone's house? Yeah. And then it'll be like right, okay, you know what? From then onwards, what we're going to do to kill some time? So where are we going to go? Right. Are we going to go raving, Africa Centre, late night pictures, come through in Leicester Square. Uh, sure, block, a life. Block, <laughs> block, block around a friend's house. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? It was like, and then it would be like, yeah, we, we knew what night buses were going there. We mm. knew what time we were going to get there. We knew that if we painted and we got at a certain time that on, on the return, the, the bus will be there. Mm. It's a man, it was just, it, it, it was... It was strategic, do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like you just, you just, that's how it was, you know? And um, and there was only, and I'll say there's only a handful of people that were lucky to have a car. And mm-hmm. I'm going to be honest with you, the only people I knew that were travelling like that to yards was like Robbo. Right. Do you know what I'm so saying? Robbo drove. Mate, them guys, them guys had at one point, they had a car, they were driving to yards. Their crew was the first crew I knew that at one point, we're going to yards by by car. They're strategic animals. They're just what, driving through like they... next level, mate. Next level. <sighs> rest in peace, Robert. Yeah, yeah. Rest I mean, in peace, Robert. Big up Drax, obviously. Yeah, you of know. course. Wow, yeah. Wow, wow, wow. See them guys. Them guys. They were they were next level. Do you know what I'm saying? They they as I said, you know, we were still taking night buses and stuff like that, mm-hmm. waiting in the cold and blah blah blah. <laughs> them guys were just rocking up, parking up, doing their thing, jumping the car back home in in, in 35 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Do you um? It's still like this now, by the way. So mm. again, you know, be be aware. This is this is a nice little story we're having. It doesn't have to be real. We're telling it like it is, though, um, as if it was real. Back in the day, however, mm. um, criminality. And how that was, it walked hand in hand with graffiti. Um, the eighties was a different place, wasn't it? Oh, definitely, yeah. Talk to me about the the environment. Talk to me about the, the that era of London. Well, 
the 80s, you had skinheads, football hooligans, um, trendies. Um, well, like your mod types. The... Yeah, then you, yeah, you're the mod types. When I say trendies, I'd say what's it called? Um, the West End, the West End trendies, like um, that was into jazz funk and stuff. Oh, like yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, cool. the mods. Yeah, yeah, like said skinheads, punks, new romantics, new romantics. Yeah, yeah, yeah you literally Love there was like a, there was a whole yeah. melting pot of everything. Ooh. Do you know what I'm saying? And then you obviously had the gay community as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it was just, and then you had us. <laughs> mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? The people that was into their hip hop. Mm-hmm. So was it was there a harmony to that? Was there a because I, I would I would imagine like the Metlers never really got on with the the hip hop guy. It was quite fresh. well. The skinheads. I mean, like when we used to go to Covent, the skinheads used to, we, we we always there was always fighting with the skinheads and really yeah, and the guys that was into hip hop always really because um, yeah, it's just uh, racial from yeah. a racial point. Oh, yeah, definitely okay, without so. a doubt. And then you've got to avoid the football lot. So, which were kind of like 50 50. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, man, it was, an, it, yeah, it was, it was hard. You have to, literally have to navigate. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? To do your thing. So, they don't make these, they don't make these subcultures easy, do they? Like, you, you, nah. it's, it's always thing, it was like it's beginning phases, and people often they, they don't appreciate the, 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 the back end hard work mm. that it takes to. It takes time, doesn't it? Like it takes time to to build a, a, a culture and for it to actually, you know, stabilize us off. Yeah. Because no one wants change. No one wants new like mm. that. They don't. If they if they think it's worth mocking, they'll mock it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It was mad. As I said, it, it felt like it felt like being felt like being the, the warriors. That's what it felt like at times. Oh God, that's cool. Yeah. Who so. wouldn't want to be a warrior? <laughs> <laughs> a big up Met, by the way, CBM. You know, know it. I know you're watching. He, my he brother. loves. He, he's yeah, king yeah. of the warriors. Yeah, man. big time, big time. Wu Tang King. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and food connoisseur. He loves his food, man. He loves his food. I, I love that about Met, man. Yeah. He loves his food, man. He's cultured, man. Yeah. I'm giving that, man. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Yeah. Um, talk to me about Cov because with Covent Garden, I mean, you could check countless podcast where we talk about it but i always love to hear the stories you know big mm. up dolby cobble king um tell you tell us some stories bro right i remember the first day i went to covent i was at school and i remember someone's going oh man you've got to go to covent garden spats and charing cross yeah, yeah. And i was like right okay so i just literally went to my um local kind of like little light club and i was doing my little robotics there and whatever and breaking mm-hmm. And then I jumped in the train at Tooting, Tooting Beck, went straight away up to Tottenham Court Road. And then literally from there, went into Spats. And I remember going in there thinking, oh my God, <laughs> this is it. I was just thinking, I'm just like literally just soaked in this scene. And I'm looking around, I'm looking at DJs, mm. and I'm, there's breakers there and everyone's got their fresh gear on, do you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? If they've got their Kangos, the Cassells, mm-hmm. their tracksuits, trainers. It was just, it was just the maddest, it was the maddest thing. How big like was feeling. Spats? How big was it? It was small, man. It was really? small. Yeah. yeah, it was small. Because it's like a restaurant small. now or something, or something like that. I don't now. know, I don't know. But like, it was just small. But it seemed wow. to pack so many people in there. Yeah. And um, I remember the, the, one of the first times I went, just like, it was a couple of people that really stood out. So um, Family Quest was was mm-hmm. the, was was the was the um, was like the the MCs for me that stood out the mm-hmm. most. DJ wise, for me, was Cutmaster Swift, and the reason why for me he stood out the most was um, Big Up Johnny. Yeah, Big Up Johnny, come on, son. Um, yeah, you know, and um, the reason why he stood out for me the most was one minute he was DJing, and then next minute. I'd look on the floor and he's and he's breakdancing. I'm like, huh? So he was kind of like, for me, he was kind of like the first person I knew that kind of done two different things. Do you mm. know what I'm saying? In, in, in hip hop, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So one minute he was DJ, next minute he was breaking. So I was like, okay. So he stood out a lot. And um, and then you had, um, and obviously there was breakers. Mm. So you had like, you had Hallett. <sighs> Big up Hallett. Yeah. <gasps> You had Little Wiz. Uh-huh. You had Lee. 
I remember they, they were the two kind of like youngest breakers back then. Was Scam was scammed around at, at that time? I don't remember seeing Scam at that particular time. I don't remember meeting him at that time. Yeah. I met him slightly after that. Big up Scam. Yeah, mate. Big up Scam. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And um, they were the kind of like peoples that, that I, I remember from Spats. Airborne as well, I remember Ooh, him. Oh, now there's a name. Yeah, Yo. man. Now that name there, yeah. to me, like when people talk about B-boy names yeah. here, right? That to me is the ultimate B boy name. I got goosebumps when you said that, bro. When I heard Airborne his name, Airborne people, fucking yeah, man. Sick. And he used to, and he always used to wear. I remember he always used to wear what's it called, um, Air Forces as well. That's the coolest shit. That's I've what heard. I remember as well back then. See your brand, branding, this, yeah. all of that, right? Standard, mate. Standard. Airborne. Yeah, mate. That was the, that was the ultimate B boy name for me. Big time. Out of everyone's name, yeah. that name stuck. Yeah. So from from then, obviously, spats. He went to Charing Cross. Everyone just kind of like from the spats Charing Cross, like mm. breaking down there. Mm. And then ended up at Covent Garden. Mm. And um, I went up there literally religiously, religiously every week. And then I could tell that like up up at Covent now, there was like a, a kind of divide after going up there like a little while now. And I was thinking, right, okay, so there's that little... The, I'd, I'd call them the um, the what sort of crew would I say? I call them. I'd call them the the elite, the right. elite crew. Right. Okay. Yeah. By design or by um, what? What? As in being technically superior or or just kind of ego shit? Both. Oh. <laughs> both. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah both. Yeah. Both. Is that everything you need. Yeah. Exactly. So um, so you had the you know, and then you had the people that were. Gifted and talented, but not necessarily part of the elite crew. Mm. I gravitated to the other side because for me, um, I met some really good people there mm. that are still my friends now. But also in the in the elite crew, there were some good people there as well. Mm. So I kind of floated in the middle of both. You gotta be cool to be cool, you see. Like you can't just be, you know. Only few people can flip like that and do. Yeah, there was there was only really, yeah. You, you know, there's there's not really a lot of people that could kind of like go in between. Really, you you pretty much one or the other. Do you know what I'm saying? Who's there? Who else was there? Who else was in the crowd and mingling? That, that you know, no, we you know that you didn't know, but in hindsight recognised that they were there. Uh, there was loads of people. Really? Um, yeah. I mean, at that time, I didn't know Dolby. I'd, he was up there. Mm. I'd seen him quite a bit up there. Um, I'm trying to think the early days. I knew Scotty. Scotty lived a break. Mm -hmm. um, there was Business. Yeah. There was Pogo. There was Cosmic Pogo. Jam. Nice. Um, there was MC Duke. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, MC Duke, man. Yeah. <gasps> there was Chili from um, um, Funky Dope Maneuvers. Was Norm there? Normski? Was Norm yeah, Normski. Yeah, Normski was up there regular up taking pictures. Yeah. yeah. Um, Paz, 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 yeah, yeah, Paz. yeah, yeah he Paz. was up there as well. Jonesy, yeah. um, Blade, Jonesy, I saw Jonesy, um, kind of later on. Yeah, I didn't really, I didn't see him early, early days. Um, it was Eugene, nice. from Love, Lift a Break, yeah, um, Lift a Break, we're Pervez, so we had Pervez, big up Pervez. Um, it was T up there. Big up B-Boy Documents as well. Old type B-Boy Documents, Fez 147. Um, I know he was very much re representing over there at the time. There was Bam, Doc. Mm. There was... Bam from Scientist of Sound? Bam. No, 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 no. Um, no, nah, not Bam from Scientist of Sound. Bam was... Um, he used to he used to move around with um, people like Samson. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, and then Samson and Simba. Uh-huh. Um, Those are names I know for a while. Wow. Yeah, there, there was, there was, there was, you know, as I said, there were some proper characters up mm. above Covent, you know what I'm saying? Mm. You had, you had the, the hard knock characters, then you had the characters that were jokes. Um, and then obviously, you know, and all of them were all talented, mm. you know? And um, so we kind of, I, I kind of flitted in between. So I was good friends with a few people that mm. were doing their thing. And then there was a few people... I liked on this side mm. that I thought, you know what, they're cool. And, um, you know, I ended up 
you know, one of the one of the first people I met, like that I bonded with, when I went up to Covent, was um, Dexter mm. and MC Can, who, um, who who formed end up forming a, a group at the time called D to the K. Oh, okay. Yeah. This has been way before Brotherhood. Oh, wow! 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 So this connects with the big up Dexter. Yeah. We have, so, we have often have bants on comedy, with big comedy fans, particularly Rick Mail. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. Yeah, big up yeah. Dexter, you know what time it is. So, yeah, MC Can, he, um, them, I met them guys up there and then uh, I ended up meeting a guy called um, Harry T, who's, who's mm-hmm. a B-boy, mm-hmm. who he's part of the um, Foundations crew. Yep, which again, big up Scam, that's, that's a, right. you know what I mean? That's right, and um, another guy called Howley. Mm-hmm. And they were at that time. They were they were they were what's it called um, into a bit of graph, and they were more into collecting breaks. Really, I wasn't into collecting breaks then. I loved music. I wasn't really um, really DJing or doing anything like that. Mm. I was just like, you know. So I met up with them guys, and then um, we were all like minded, mm. and we all had jokes and stuff like that, and we just formed a little crew. So they, in that crew, they would say there was, there was, um, it was me, Dexter, MC Can, Harry T, as I said, Howley. There was Pogo Sisters, Barbara and Trish. Pogo Sisters. Yeah, yeah. Rapping, breaking. No, no, no we, they were just we were just we just formed this little, yeah, this yeah, little yeah, yeah. gang. Do you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I, I and do then know what you mean. we had a guy called um, Gary Peak, um, Peaky. He, uh, he was a legend in himself. We used to call him Mr. Tenants. <laughs> no, I always had a can of Tenants. There was Big Len. There was um, Scam used to come to the house. Brilliant. Wow. Harry, as I said, Harry used to come as well. Um, who else used to come? Yeah, there was a few guys from Gravesend, like um, um, a couple of girls from Gravesend that used to, used to what's it called, come down to Covent. Mm-hmm. Um, they come as well. And we always used to go around to Dexter's house. He was, as I said, you know, you get that house where there's one person that that can that can have people around. Mm-hmm. So his mum was a nurse, so she'd she'd go away and she'd obviously do crazy hours. So on a Friday, we would go to Dexter's house, and he had his deck set up and stuff like that. And Game everyone time, used to go man. there, smoke chiba, yeah. drink tenants and whatever, and we just used to go to his decks, and it was just it was just it become a sociable thing. Do you know what I'm saying? And then. We had to bounce at certain times because his mum was coming home, make sure the house was tidy. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And then, and then, you know, if we stayed the next day, we'd go from there straight down to Covent. Oh, God, that's cool. Like, yeah, I just, I just get drifted away in my head of, of just the time, almost believing myself that I was there personally. It's just yeah, like, yeah. Such, it sounds so, it sounds so romantic. Now, the idea of just the freedom and, again, you, you know, can't emphasize it more that this was such a you know young scene. Oh, definitely, yeah. And and the mad, when I think about it now, the maddest things we were so young as well, mm-hmm. you know. And like, how the hell did we get away with like mm. staying out at people's houses? Do you know what I'm saying? At the age of 14, 15, mm. you know, and um, and then going the next day, and then and then and then going off and meeting up and going clubbing and stuff like that. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? So. Crazy, absolutely crazy. I mean, like, cool. Yeah. If my son was doing that at the age of fourteen, I'd be going absolutely nuts. Yeah, cool, right? <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Knowing what we know, yes, but especially doing what we do. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it was mad. So you got a son? Yes, I have. Yeah, he's um, twenty one, never twenty two. Uh, very good. And, and what, 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 do, do, do you ever indulge with him? Of you know history and and the things that you've played part in. Well, to be quite honest, I've got like he knows all of my friends, mm. so. Um, he pretty much he's pretty much got a picture of like what I used to do and stuff mm. like that. And I'm you know I'm quite open with him anyway. Do you mm. know what I mean? So he knows I've done things like trains and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And he knows I still graffiti. And yeah. you know he, he you know he, he he knows that we used to go out when we was young and mm. stuff like that. So yeah, he's he's he he's clued up. Mm. And my brother as well. My younger brother. He's like thirty three now. Mm. And um, he. He was probably the one I spoke to the most about stuff like that. Really? Yeah. So you had a kinship. You 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 you, you had that kind of relationship oh, where me, you talk- me, me and my brother, man, like mm. my younger brother, he's, we're just tight. Nice. You know what I'm saying I kind of educated him musically wise and mm. stuff like that. And he's 
You know, he, he, like for someone of, of his age group, he knows what time it is. Nice. Musically. Do you know what I'm saying? Does he? Does he? Is he involved in the arts? Your brother? No, he's not. No, he's a he's a he's, he's a just thespian. a cool cat. He's no, a, cool he's a thespian. Cat. He, ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's um, he's he's a wicked little actor. Oh, fantastic um, man. Yeah, so but I also found out he can MC, which oh, freaked me out. Really? Because I didn't even know. So one barbecue now, he he was because he obviously comes to the barbecue every year, mm-hmm. or most years anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then one of my mates was cut, I think it was random or something like that, DJ Random. Mm. One one of the guys was cutting up some some stuff here, right? And I, and I just looked up and I see my brother rapping, I was like, what? the hell and <laughs> I was shocked because he was good do you know what I'm saying and I'm trying to encourage him to what's it called um, to get back into it you know because I was, I was I was absolutely shocked like I couldn't believe it um, so let me ask you one question go for it right so you you beatbox obviously mm. so is there any other um, part of the art form that you're involved in or that you that you've been or you've dabbled in Graph for sure. Okay, um, cool. Yeah, graph. Uh, MCing because it's part of the similar sort of discipline of, yeah. the, of the mouth and beatboxing. Um, and yeah, I'd go as far as to say I've dabbled in more selector based things as a DJ. It's yeah. just it's just having you dipping your toe into these That's things, it. you know, and seeing how far. It's up to you how far you want to go, isn't it? That is true. That's, That's what I love about it. Yeah, it's a yeah. beautiful thing. Mm. I, I I don't think by doing it. I don't think anyone can ever profess t- to being absolutely great at one thing. Yeah. But I think it's, like you say, it's a conduit to other things. Like, because, you know, I was just about to get into it with you regarding, yeah. you know, uh, Muddy Funksters, DJing, mm. Big Up Nihal, you know, these, mm. this this is an area that when you first started doing it as in robotics, yeah. you, you, it just gave you, it gave you a conduit to, to doing something that is tangible. That's right. That your parents would be like, yo, I had no idea that was coming. Yeah, it well... Know? And yourself as well. So, mm. like, coming on to, like, um, the birth of Muddy Funksters now. Mm. So, being introduced, like, as I said, what's it called? Uh, meeting Dexter and mm. MC Can. Mm. I end up being, like, a, a kind of, like, their hype man sort of thing on stage with them. So, it got to the, it got to the point where um, I was thinking, do you know what? Because I was dabbling a bit into DJing as well. Mm-hmm. And I thought, oh, do you know what? It'd be good to have an MC. And I remember MC Can going, yeah, I know a guy mm-hmm. who, lives in, who lives just in the outskirts of Harlow and he's an MC. I was like, right, okay. He does a tiny bit of graphing now and then. I was like, okay, cool. So um, I'll introduce you to him. So he, he, he brought him down to Covent Garden. He goes, yeah, this is Neil. This is Colt. I was like, yeah, all right. And that was it. Just gelled straight away. He used to, he, even he used to dabble in graph. Did he? Yeah, yeah, he used to write oh. San. Was he right? San. S- San? Yeah. That's bonkers, yo, I didn't know that. Yes. Um, Nihal was one of the, because he, 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 he was contributive to so much in hip hop. And when I remember back in the day, you know, Hip Hop Connection, Represent Magazine, yep. all these things, Muddy Funksters were very much a thing. Like, I remember it. Right, so how did Muddy Funksters thing come about? So when we hooked up with, um, when we got hooked up at that particular time, a little project was coming called Hardcore One, mm. um, which was a compilation album with a collective of different artists that were not well known and, um, and basically... Um, we, I'd say mainly Dexter and, um, and No Sleep Nigel. Mm-hmm. Big up Nigel. Listen. My guy. Yeah, definitely. So Dexter was pretty much, Dexter single-handedly was the person that brought Nigel to the hip-hop scene. Really? Yes. Wow. He is, he, he is the guy that them two met in Bromley in a in an off license, what? That's how that meeting happened, and they were talking whatever, and it just they just had this 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 connection, and then that was it. They just went on. So, to, um, so no sleep, Nigel. For those that don't know, he's like the Bob Powell of like. <laughs> he is, yeah. He's or, a mix um, engineer. Yeah, he's he's like the Bob Powell stroke. Yeah. Um, 
what's the guy from Def Jam? What's his name? Oh, uh, Rick Rubin. Uh, Rick Rubin. Rubin. Yeah, 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 totally. Yeah. He's, he's like he's like them two rolled into one. If you ever had the experience of, and also I'd even say I'd even I'd even be brave enough to say even Jay Diller at the point because the Yo. way that guy that guy was creative, mm. like big time. Oh my god! I mean, like I, I put a couple of tracks together and, we, and like I just threw ideas at him. And he just went, yeah. And the way he was technical with it, and the way he put stuff together, yeah. oh, it was deep. Yeah, he just it just felt it obviously felt like um, you you were in safe hands. And uh, it, it just my experience of working with him, which was only like maybe two tracks. Yeah. But it was early, like well, early in my career. Mm. I just felt like being so young and impressionable. I just felt like I was with somebody that wasn't going to do it wrong. Do you know what I mean had my back? You know, what I mean he was yeah. just in control. And he was, he was. I mean, he was going through like. He, he didn't really know anything about hip hop. Yeah. So the way he homed in on his craft, we was on that journey. Mm. Like, and as I said, we put this album together called Hardcore One. And Dexter and MC Can put a track together called um, Slow Jam. And they had MC Mellow on it. Another and Sparky legend. Ski, another uh, legend. Yeah, Sparky Ski, man. Listen, mate, Fuck, yeah. under, underrated. Yeah. Well, not so much underrated. Unsung. Just under, yeah. I, I would say that uh, Sparky is like the unsung hero yeah. of yeah. producers yeah. 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 in this country, without a doubt, hip hop. So, so sick. They went and done, they went and done a track, and me and they had done a track called Into the Music. Mm-hmm. So that went out on the album, and then... A, a few other people that was on the album, Yinka, big up to Yinka. Wow, she was on the album as well. And you can go check these. You Google that shit. You know what time it is. Yeah, you know, throw it in Google the comments. that. Yeah. Google that. And um, and literally bought out this album. It was all on it. It was like our first kind of record, and we were just like, we, we were so carefree about it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's just like. Yeah, we've done a record. Yeah, cool. Mm. Do you know what I mean? We're mm-hmm. right there. Yeah, fine. We're just buzzing. Do you yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, to be yeah. part of a process. Yeah. And then, um, so we were called AKA back then. And then um, we were doing like tracks and stuff like that. And as I said, we went in a studio with Nigel um, and we'd done a couple of tracks there. And that was in Cold Storage in Brixton. That was like the probably the, the main studio that most people ended up going to. Mm. I'd probably say it was about 87, um, stroke 88. Wow, fucking hell. And, um, Crazy. And we ended up doing two tracks in there, me and now. Gutted, we didn't do nothing with it. I've still got the tracks now as it goes. And um, That's great. So from then onwards, we, um, we, got, we got asked to do uh, a commission track for MTV. And it was called um, Destruction of the Environment. <laughs> so I was like, wicked. I was like, okay, we need a track that's got a kind of, kind of like a commercially kind of appeal, mm. but at the same time still kind of keeping it. But we was probably at this stage now, we was probably just cut, we was probably at the swing beat era now. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. So new Jack I, Swing kind of shit. Yeah, around that kind of area. So this track kind of had like a, a kind of new Jack Swing sort of cool um, feel to it. Yeah. And what ended up happening was I ended up going to this guy's house who, um, rest in peace, passed away and he's become a, um, a breakbeat legend, which was um, the name of James Lacey. Yes, yes. So... I hooked up with James. Oh, yeah. Rest in peace, Lacey. Uh, I went to his house because he used to live in a place called Bishop Stalford, mm-hmm. which is just in Hertfordshire. Mm-hmm. And um, and I, I remember what's it called going around to his house first because the guy had some serious breaks. Yeah, he was a, yeah. Yeah, a big, big a collector of yeah, breaks. Yeah, right? he had yeah. some proper... He was like one of the first people I knew had like a really obscure sort of yeah. um, collection. Proper gear. gear. Yeah. So, and also he had like a... Um, and he had a S nine nine hundred as well, mm. that guy. And so we went round there and we just bounced off some ideas and we put this track together. And then, um, so we went to um, the strong room, mm-hmm. took the track to the strong room, put it there, laid it down, um, tweaked it, tuned it up. Neil come in, put his rap down. Wow. And then um, it got put on MTV. That's fantastic. And we've done a video for it as well. Yeah. 
Um, and and then because you know back then it was just like we were just like oh man who can we get to come into this video we were just thinking all, all our local friends yeah, yeah, and people yeah, that yeah, we yeah. liked oh, do you fancy doing a video yeah do you fancy do, yeah, do you fancy doing dancing in this video yeah blah 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 that's so, so sick and it was the first time mm. that um, that we'd actually done a video yeah. for anything yeah. so people f- seem to think that like doing videos are glamorous and stuff like that but it's not it's yeah. tedious it's tedious. boring yeah, 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 yeah. do you know you know afterwards like, oh my god I can't through this again yeah. and different angles and I mean I don't know if you've done a video yourself mm, before yeah, it's but it's a fucking ball it, it, it is it, it's not easy do you know what I'm saying it's not enough I don't feel I, I, yeah. I feel sorry for the editors as well because you yeah. know it's, it's quite a thankless task it's just yeah. three minutes yeah. long and just get it out three there. minutes long yeah that's you right I mean? but it takes about ten hours to make yeah yeah hell or whatever yeah yeah we've done that I think that was about 91 92 ah. and then um and then now ended up working with some local guys in Harlow called um, Collapse Lung. Yeah, that, and that, that was a whole other level of, yeah. of his career. Yeah, so yeah. the guy that, like, he got on with the guy, the main guy, Anthony, he was mm. into his hip hop. And I suppose around that sort of time, like, everyone had a kind of, um, everyone was kind of, I suppose, they're finding their feet musically. Mm. Mm. And um, yeah, they went on and they went to go and um, record a few things and. Yeah, pop on that like kind of rap rock kind of thing. They're quite an yeah, aggressive. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they were. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. I remember this well. Yeah, they done a couple of tracks, and then he got into like the 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 article writing, you know, and no, nah, that was that was pretty much just as we started to do the muddy funks and sort of stuff. I think mm, around, yeah. yeah, it was around that sort of stuff. So what happened was he went and done um, the claps lung stuff. But really, he wanted to do the um, more of the hip hop stuff. Mm. So, an A and R man come to see him from um, Go Disc Go Beat Records, yeah, yeah. and said, okay. "Oh, you know, we, we, we're really interested in what's it called, um, what you do, blah 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 blah." And he went, "Yeah." He goes, "You know, clap songs cool, and I, and I love doing it, but really, I've got another group that I do stuff with." And he's like, "Yeah, okay." So, so what had happened was. He come back and he went, like, we, we can go to the studio and do a demo. I was like, okay, cool. So then what we done was, there was another group that we used to go around with um, back back in Harlow. Mm-hmm. And what had happened was the MC of the group, he went on and become religious and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And the producer and the other kind of rapper ended up mad mate with us. Oh, oh, quite tight. Nice. And then... We went in the studio, we done the track. It was so unprofessional. They put us in um, Virgins. It's around the corner from here. Oh yeah, down the, yeah, yeah, on yeah. Harrow Road. Yeah, yeah. They put us in Virgins, yeah. and they 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 literally what's it called? Um, we done the track. It was shocking. Oh, like, no. I think when I when I think about it now, it it was it was they gave us a record deal on it. Wow. All right. I mean, I haven't had the tune, by the way, but I, I, I definitely have some uh, it's, some it, questionable characters in my catalogue, <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. So I, I, I was, and when he, and he, I said, "Yeah, mate, we're gonna we're gonna sign a record deal." I went, "Wow, what?" So then he was like, "Okay, we can't use the word, we can't use the, the name AKA no more. It's just not it hasn't got like a um, a feel to it." Mm-hmm. So at the time, we were massive fans of Harry Enfield. Mm. Um, and, and I suppose around that sort of time as well, Pulp Fiction come out. There was loads of little things that came out mm. at that particular time. Mm. So I remember we was watching this specific um, um, piece on Harry Enfield. And I remember it was like um, these two characters. If you're a Harry Enfield fan, mm, yeah. you'll, you will know this straight away. Yeah, so there's these two guys. They're supposed to be Italians, mm-hmm. right? And... They're using they're using swear words, but they're changing the actual yeah, yeah, yeah. names in it. Very so, very cool. Though. So he he goes so the, he goes he goes hey he goes hey you, you fun my wife I didn't fun you? your wife I just I just sucked a cake hole <laughs> yeah 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 fucking great <laughs> right and um, the innocence but so yeah, on point yeah and yeah. and, and the, 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 it was just wicked and then all of a sudden he goes fun you you muddy funkster right and I thought. Oh, and we all kind of like was like, yeah, we like that. Muddy Funks, I was thinking, yeah, that's 
That's, that's, that's quite a mad name. I thought, you know what? That's it. That's the one. What a story. That's mad, isn't it? Mm. How a popular culture dictates certain... Yeah. Um, I, a friend of mine has a band called Does It Offend You? Yeah. Yeah. And they got that from the office, you know. Does it yeah. offend you? Yeah, 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 you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny how those things provide everything you need of an attitude of a yeah. of where you want to go. And it's, yeah. what it's, what, what's, even the sound can be just by one tinkering that was of it. A... That was it. We saw that and was like, that's it, bang. That's what we're going to call ourselves. So then we went back to the record company and they gave us like, um, they gave us like a, a, a budget and they gave us a deal, like a free album deal. So we were quite clever at the time and we was like, right, we've got two options. We can spend our first advance on a studio, which then means that we can cut out paying for um, studio time mm. and also we can master at home. Master at home? Yeah, yeah, we mastered. See, and this, this is coming from an era which there was definitely... Um, stages in production and there were, there were these gatekeepers that, you know, mm. you have a producer, you have a master, you have an A&R, like this was... But you're saying that you did the mastering as well as the music at home. Yeah, right. So... It's rare. Let me just break this down here, right? Because nowadays you can just buy one piece of equipment or you can buy a computer and some software and you can do that at home. If you had studio time back then... Studio time was precious. Mm. Like, you'd have to make sure that you'd done your research at home so you knew what breaks fitted in with whatever. Mm. You knew how you was going to do this track. Mm. And then once, once you've, you've got the two decks and you've kept on looping it, looping mm. it, then you've got to make sure, you know, your, your MC has got his lyrics, is on point. You've got your... Yeah. You've time is money. Catchphrase. It yeah. is, especially back then. Yeah. And it was expensive to get studio yeah. time. So we just thought, we'll just cut all that out and we'll just buy a studio. Hmm. And we used to always walk past turnkeys because oh, turnkeys was the, that was the place yeah, to go. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? I love you, it when the DJs were down there and they would be scratching yeah, the shit. Yeah, like, I mean, it was just mad. We used to look in the windows and yeah. just dream and think, oh man, yeah. look at that piece of equipment, man. We'd love to have that. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turnkey was like a, a beautiful spot on, um, on Tottenham Court That's Road, it. right? That was That's it. Yeah, it. I love it. So we were like, okay, you know what? We're going to spend 40 grand on a studio. And we was like, that's it. We're going to buy. So we could do, we had the reels. Wow. So we had reel to reel. We had the Atari ST with um, not a crack dongle because mm. normally you get the crack copy. Mm. We, had, we went and bought the proper, proper copy. <laughs> I don't know what we you the, mean. We had the proper copy. Um, we had an S1100, which I've still got now. Nice. Yes. They, this should now break. If you, you know what I mean? Still got now, modern day. stuff. This is right. We're talking about proper. 95, 96. That'd be worth some money, that one. Nah, to me, it's more sentimental more than anything else. Yeah, do you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I feel you. And um, we had a DAP machine. Mm. We had effects. We had a desk. We had everything. That's fantastic. So we were, as I said, we were, we were looking at it as we wanted to master at, at our place. Mm. And so that we don't have to pay the studio, but mm. they put us in studios anyway um, for more about um, just, to, just to be around studios and see how it works and stuff like that. So um, we, used to, we used to go up to, um, there's a studio in York that we used to go up to. So we'd travel up there to go and record because we, we'd done a gig up there once. And, um, and it, was, it, it was so, it, like, the, the, where we'd done this gig, it was like the, um, the venue was upstairs and downstairs was a studio. And I remember we went downstairs nice. to have a look at the studio and it was it was sick. And I was like, oh, this, we was like, oh, this looks really good. Mm -hmm. And he's going, yeah, we, you know, we can, if you want to come down here and record and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, okay, cool. And then we would, then we would um, also record in Deptford with a group called Wobble You. Wobble You? Yeah. All right, new names. Now, that group there, they were like, we went on tour with them and um, we we become really good friends of them. Mm -hmm. And they were they were they they were Deptford boys. So we they had a studio up in Greenwich, and um, and they were kind of like their sort of music was was proper, kind of a, a bit like um, a bit like kind of like a, a cross between kind of like madness and oh, and Ian Jury and the Blockheads. 
Damn. Kind of like a proper cross between yeah, them. Yeah, I need to hear this. Right. Well, you've got the name now, yeah, so it's all good. Yeah, what were you on that? Google that shit. That right. sounds hard. And, um, and basically, they talked about stuff that was around Deptford, yeah. Greenwich, all South East London and stuff like that. That's what they were about. Yes. So they had a studio there. Nice. So we went and we used to come record there. And we also used to go to um, the Strong Room as well. Yeah. So that was on, um, is it uh, in Old Street? That, that Strong Room? Or is there, was there another Strong Room of its time? Oh, I, think it was, I think it was either there or Putney, one of the two. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So. Because Putney was another place where, you yeah. know, where the, the industry would. Yeah, because Putney wasn't too far from um, where our record, because there was in Stanford. St- uh, st- is this? A district like Stan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, oh, BMG were around there, weren't they? Yeah, that's right. BMG yeah. was around there. Yes, yeah. that's right. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, we got our equipment together, and then what we done was we treated it like a nine to five. So we would come in at nine o'clock in the morning. Literally, we'd have either have breakfast, or whatever. Mm. We'd come in. We would record all day. Lunch would be. <laughs> we used to have toasted sandwiches. We used to have like a toasted sandwich maker. Yeah. Then we'd be straight onto the Nintendo Super NES. Yeah. Playing Mario Karts Woo. and PG Golf. Yeah. yeah. So that, that used to be our thing at lunch. And then we'd go back into music and Beautiful. then we'd work till five. So the studio was at my house. Mm. So I had it built into like uh, some, yeah, I had it all built in and it looked really nice and stuff like that. So what I used to do is, because I thought to myself, do you know what? There's not really many people that are in this kind of position. So. I used to invite people to come around mm-hmm. and kind of like produce tracks for them and stuff like that. So at the time we was quite we was quite pally with um, Gunshot and um, big up Gunshot, definitely big up Gunshot, man. And um, and they had like a few guys that uh, were part of their crew. So a couple of them would come over and then would record and stuff like that. Mm. And then from then onwards, I'd. Um, Shawnee T come in. That's oh. how I met Shawnee T. Oh, Shawnee, old tight. Yeah, he come in. That's a don. He come down. Mm. Um, I'm trying to think who else come in as well. I fucking oh. love this. Um, it's Spark- just... Sparky come down. Nice. Um, a guy called Nick who and, and a guy called Lawyer. He they, they come down as well and we made a track. Um, I made a track for him as well. And that, that they actually printed it out and actually, actually what's it called, produced, actually put it out on on um on a, on their own label. Nice. I'm gutted. I ain't got a copy. I'm trying to get a um an MP an MP3 version of it. But um yeah, we you know I started you know when I was at home I started like basically um engineering and and doing some tracks for other people as well. Just because you know, I thought to myself, you know what, I'm in a position that I can do. I've this. got a studio. Yeah. And there's not really many people that have got what we had. And keep the machine moving. So yeah. it's like, listen, if we can bring people in and and they can record and stuff like that, then cool, come in. So that's how it was. And then, um, so we went on tour. So the first, I'm trying to think, the first tour that we went on was, we went and done um, the Phoenix Festival. So that was a year when Cypress Hill was the big deal. Mm-hmm. So now, mm-hmm. this is the first time Cypress Hill come into England. So they come and done this um, festival. So we was like, oh my God, man, we're like literally playing in a small tent. And so I pursue we're going to be on later on that. Mm-hmm. And it was my first kind of like festival experience. I stayed there for the whole weekend. Oh, it was out. Yo. It was mad. And, and I remember, um, I remember when we, um, when we went on the stage, it was mad. Like loads of people from a, a local area had come, mm. had gone to the festival and we'd seen it. It was like, oh, hey. It was like, oh, how you doing, mate? Yeah, blah, 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 blah. It's all like that. And, it, and then, and then we done our set. And um, yeah, we done a good job. And who else was there as well at the time? Um, this was definitely of its time, you know. This was when the um, Chemical Brothers as well yeah. um, were massive. Yeah. What were they called before that? No, what were they called after that? It was called the Chemical Brothers and they changed their names to... Um... Oh, damn. Now they have a different name? Was it the Dust Brothers or something like that? Oh, so like a kind of... Um... It was a name that they couldn't use because it would be been um, copyrighted. So, right. so, yeah, so they, 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 they went to the Chemical Brothers. Yeah, yeah. So they were massive back then. So, And also as well, as I think at that time as well, Ill Communication came out. Oh, my God. And this was totally of its time. 
So this was Black Sunday era, ill communication. That's it. Yes, that's exactly when it was. Oh, that's a beautiful yeah, time. Yeah, so it was, a, it was a really, like, musically for hip-hop, it was a wicked time. And quite experimental. Really. Very experimental. Yeah. Yes, I was about to say very experimental. The especially crossover. Especially that Beastie Boys album, man. That yeah. Ill Communication album was sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it threw everyone because of yeah. the punk influence. It, it, and... it, listen, that album yeah. was just groundbreaking. Black Sunday broke, broke, yeah. broke barriers. And I would imagine for, for you guys, it, because I always felt that there was an, it, it was an alt kind of mm. vibe you guys had and... Yeah, I was always keen to experiment and cross over, wasn't it? Right, this is the thing now. Yeah. So when Cypress Hill came out, everyone kind of, there was a point where everyone kind of jumped to that kind of style. We didn't want to, we, we, our appeal, we didn't want to just appeal just to people that was into hip hop. We wanted mm. to appeal to people that was into music yeah. and that we into music that was experimental. Yeah. But also yeah. we kept our roots as well. Yeah. So we didn't get really the love that we wanted to from the hip hop community, mm -hmm. but we wanted, to, we wanted to branch out anyway. Do you know what I'm saying? And also I'll tell you what else came out as well at that time as well, Porter's Head. Because they oh was on the same God. record label yeah. as us. Which I guess, and also Massive Attack were... No, nah, no, nah, this was like, this, no, Porter's Head come, Massive Attack was before that, right, but okay. Porter's Head come out and just took, literally took the baton off of, um, of Massive Attack, mm. Tricky, yeah. And then went and run with it. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Was a, let me just check the camera. That's a mad already. That was mm. boy. Yeah, cool. We've got 20 minutes. 20 minutes before, before we wrap, if that's all right. Yeah, cool. Um, fucking Porter's head. That's a whole different I mean that pretty much blew the doors out of anything oh, definitely. people had in mind of Bristol. It was mm. just this this juggernaut. Yeah. So yeah, we went as I said, we went on we went and done that and then we went on tour with um Skunk and Nancy. And a, a group called Another, um, Double. Amazing, amazing. Do you know amazing what? Band. That was. We, well, I'll be honest with you, man. That that tour there, we learned loads, like setting up, just being just like she she literally, you know, she spoke to us and just like gave us little tips and stuff like that, and pointers and stuff like that. Big and skin, skin. Yeah, Come on. without a doubt. And um, that was wicked as well. Yeah. And Dub War as well. They were really good as well. Dub War. Now that's a name I ain't heard yeah. for a while. Yeah, man. They were wicked. And. Um, they were Jeez. cool as well. See, how alternative is that, people? You know what I mean? Like, in, from B-Boy and Cov Garden to being on stage. You know, this is a trajectory and a half, man. <laughs> yeah, it was mad. It was wicked. I said we just just took it in our stride and just literally just, just run with it. Cult 45 as a, um, as a name, as a, as a per per personality within the scene... Um, and like I alluded to at the start, you know, it could be anything it wants to be. Um, I'm going to fast track slightly, I'm sure, mm. you know, to the, the tattooist, mm. the, the the graphic designer, the establishment owner. Mm. Um, that that must have been a, a, a kind of circle back around of, of its time of utilising the skill sets of graph. Do you know what was really mad about that was... I actually just fell into it by accident. Really? Yeah, it was. Um, Mad. <laughs> it was crazy. So at the time, I, I'd own. I'd, I'd wanted a business, and I wanted to like. Um, at one point, I wasn't. I was. I wasn't working, and I was thinking, do you know what? I need a purpose in life. I need to have a business. I need to, somewhere mm. to go every day in office. Mm. Blah, blah blah blah. So I bought a business off a um, off a off a friend locally. Like it was a sunbed shop. Mm -hmm. So I literally, like. Converted it, done it, um, made it from a business that was declining to going up. And then um, one day a guy came in and went, yeah, I really like this business, blah, blah, blah. He was like a friend of a friend. And he goes, do you want to sell it? I goes, no, nah, I ain't really. And he goes, well, listen, when you're ready to sell this, let me know. So anyway, about six months later, I thought, you know what? I fancy selling it and I fancy what's it called, um, just having a year out. I'm mm -hmm. thinking about what I'm going to do next. So, okay, so anyway, I put it to him. He went, yeah, I'll have it. So he just literally bought it straight cash. I was like, right, okay. Love them so, ones, innit? It? it was mad. Cash money. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so now I'm sitting back and I'm just chilling. So what happened was I'd lent this guy five grand, right, who who had a shop opposite me to get his, his shop going, but he still owed me some money. So, yeah, he was getting kicked out of where he was from, where he was where, opposite me, and he had to go, and he found a unit in um, in a town centre hmm. where well, he found two units. 
so what had happened is I was watching him from a distance and I noticed that like he had like he was a barber's and he had like a barber hair salon and then he had a couple of tattoos in. So I was thinking tattoos. So anyway, I'm watching him. I'm asking questions like, yeah, you know, he's going, mm. he's going, mate. That's where I make the most money. He goes to tattoos. I mean, yeah, he goes this and they make like a grand a day. What? Jeez. Like, <laughs> okay. It's like, a bit of me yeah. that is. You I was know. thinking, right, okay, yeah, yeah it sounds interesting. So I'm watching from a distance now. Anyway, so what happened was when he moved to the next shop, the tattooist decided to um, double cross him, and they end up staying at the shop that. Uh, that he was at, mm. and he was all he was geared up for every, everyone to go to the, to the new yeah. shops, and they just bounced. What? So now he's got two shops, one that he's going to do his barbering and hairdresser, at, and one that's empty. And so I said to him, "What are you doing with the shop?" He's like, "Oh, I'm going to try and get some tattoos." But I goes, "Well," and he's going, "Oh, well, why don't you come in on it on a business?" And I was like, "Yeah, I could do, I could do." And then I thought, well. What are you bringing to the table? Yeah. You know, and I said to him, listen, if you can come in half with the money, fine, yeah, no problem. Yeah. But I goes, you've got an empty shop, there's nothing you're going to do with it. Yeah. I goes, let me take the shop over. And he's like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I goes, well, either that or you get this good news. Mm-hmm. You just sign a contract. Yeah, for yeah. It. You know what I mean? And he's like, oh, go on then. So I took it over and then um, I went out, recruited some tattoos. And started started practicing myself as well. Nice. And then everything just come together. That's insane. Your life is is life of many lives. <laughs> I think that's what's most interesting about you as a character is people know you for different things. Your barbecues must be absolutely littered with your life, your timeline of people <laughs> that you've met. It, it, yeah, it's mad. Yeah. Isn't it beautiful? Mm. It's just. There's something else. There was an, um, a proper outcry uh, to a point that we weren't even expecting to have you in, in, in yeah. the world through COVID. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I mentioned it at the start, but this was a real serious time where everyone was thinking, yo, cult, pull through. Yeah, it was, um, yeah, it was deep. Yeah, I've never, I've never, I mean, I wouldn't wish this, I wouldn't wish what happened to me on anyone, but, um, yeah, it was a really. Um, I, I technically I shouldn't even be here. Yeah, yeah, like, for real. Um, How close were you? How close were you to the to the buffers? Times. Three times. Yeah, three times. The thing was when I first when I first got admitted to hospital, which was on the twenty third of um, July last year. Um, I was in there for a week, and then my son and my brother got asked to come up to say goodbye because um, they didn't think that I was actually going to um, get through the night. And then um, that was a week into it. I didn't know what was going on. I, I'll be honest with you, I don't remember. Um, I only remember really sporadic bits like. So I remember going into hospital. Then the next thing I remember, I was on a ward. Then the next thing I knew, I was back into ICU. Then after ICU, I was back onto a ward again. <sighs> then I had an operation, and it was touch and go. And then I was back into ICU again. And then, basically, they kept me in ICU longer this time. Yeah. And then, basically, from ICU, then I went on to a high-dependence ward, and then it went from high-dependence to medium into low and then I managed to um, leave. But like on the two, on on the on the first and the sec- second occasion, um, when they got asked to come up, um, I wasn't. I, I was didn't even know nothing you about. Didn't, it. You, you, nah. you just weren't there. You were no. Nah, but the third time, I was actually awake and actually come and spoke to me. <gasps> so um, what what yeah. what was what? It's probably very sensitive. But what what goes through your mind? At, at a time like that, you know, where you're faced with your own mortality. Right, to such I'm degree. gonna be really real with you. So, this consultant comes in, um, Latino, she comes in, and you know, 
Latino are quite upfront and mm. quite, mm. You know, mm. quite mm. forward and stuff like that. So if you've ever had a Latino boyfriend or girlfriend, you'll know yeah. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so she exactly comes in, means. Spanish. She's like very fast talking, and um, so she sits down with me. She goes, right, okay. At this time now, I've had um, I had a collapsed lung, so literally, I had two drains put in to try and keep the lung flated mm. and basically to try and heal it at the same time. So I had to have another operation because the tube that was going into my left lung was just not big enough and it wasn't um, it wasn't getting enough um, air into it to keep it mm-hmm. flated. So what happened was she came into my room and she said, right, so I'm laying in here, ICU now, I'm laying there. Mm-hmm. And I'm in absolute pain on morphine and just literally just like drugged up. And oh. um, so she comes in my room and she goes, right. She goes, um, your situation's not getting any better. And I'm like, right, okay. And she went, right, you've got like the, the options that we've got now. And it's pretty much the last option is this. We're going to put you on this drug. I was like, okay, so she explains what it does and what it's supposed to do. I went, right, okay, and she went, there's no chance that it could work. No, you know, no, no, what's it called? Not mm-hmm. chance, but like no, no guarantee it's going to work. But if you don't take it, there is nothing else we can do for you. So I'm like, if I take it, it's a 50 50. If I don't take it, same thing again. Yeah. And she went, yeah. So I was like, right, okay. Um, so she went away and um, I literally just laid in bed and then um, just like, just like literally just thinking to myself, oh my God, I can't believe what I've just heard. And then my brother rung me mm-hmm. and um, he went, oh, you're right, bro. And I went, boy, I... Oh. Um, this, I'm not going to make this. This is it. I know. Like, but I, I was unaware mm. of the other two occasions. And I was just like, um, I don't think I'm going to make this, bro. He's like, what? And I goes, nah. I goes, listen, I'm going to have to, um, I know you're not going to want to talk about this, but I'm going to have to start preparing for, um, basically, when I go. He was like, what? And I went, nah, seriously. I goes, look, I, I don't think, I, I goes, listen, I, this ain't really what you want to hear, but this is, I, I'm going to have to, we're going to have to talk about this. Mm. So I said, listen, if the day comes where I'm not going to be here, this is what I need you to do. So I explained to him that, like, if you go to this part, in my bank, I've got enough money to pay for my funeral. Mm-hmm. So I goes, right, so there's enough there for that. I goes, I've got my car. I goes, sell that. I goes, just put, make sure you put the money towards a wake mm-hmm. for that. And I goes, right. <laughs> I goes, in my loft, I goes, I've got my record collection. Mm. I goes, it's worth some dough. I, I goes, I've got some, you know, I've got bits up there that like are worth money, collectibles and stuff like that. Mm. I goes, listen, just sell all that. I goes, the only thing you cannot sell is my limited edition Technics 1200s. I goes, that's the only thing. I goes, that has to stay in the family, mm-hmm, no matter mm-hmm. what. Mm-hmm. I goes, everything else you can sell, put towards whatever. And I said to him, split it with, with your nephew. I goes, but don't give him the money at the moment because I goes, he will just go and squander it and whatever. And I just went, you're sensible, you would deal with this properly. And he went, right, okay. He goes, is that what you want? I went, yeah. So there was a silence for a minute. Mm. And then he turned around and went, do you know what? Fuck this. He went, you're not going nowhere. I went, what? And he went, nah, I'm not having it, mate. <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean you're not having it? I, 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 I goes, he's going, nah, I'm not having this at all, mate. He goes, you ain't going nowhere. He goes... He goes, I'm not having it. He goes, you're going to get better. He goes, and we're going to be there for you. And 
basically, that is it. And I went, right, okay. And then by the end of the conversation, we were laughing and joking, and he just literally, he pulled me out of a hole. Do you know what I'm saying? Wow. And, um, and, and then from then onwards, my mentality changed. And I was mm. just like, nah, I, I can't go anywhere. I, I mm. just can't. And I think the, the, one of the main reasons why I was just thinking, I can't, I've got to be there for my son. Yeah. So I was like, nah, I ain't going anywhere. I've got to, I've got to fight this. Yeah. So that's what I did. I just mentally fought this and just literally tried to be as positive as possible under the circumstances, which was really hard. Yeah, I can um, imagine. And um, as I said, I just, just literally my mindset just had, had to, I had to change. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And, and that's, that's what happened. And then slowly, 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 and then next thing I knew, uh, this sister came and just went, look, we're going to move you out of the ICU, ICU ward. We're going to put you onto a normal ward, but it's going to be high dependency because um, at this point I didn't realise, but I actually stopped walking, so I couldn't actually walk. <sighs> yeah, so so basically, they um, from then onwards, they put me into high dependency ward. I had to literally um, learn how to walk and breathe at the same time. It was, um, yeah, it was, it was, um, <coughs> I literally had to fight to get my fitness back up or any form of fitness or learn how to, I had to learn, as I said, I had to learn how to walk. And as I said, I learned how to breathe and walk at the same time. Pushing that we, through yeah. adversity. Yeah. That is incredible. Seriously, man, <gasps> like, like I had, I had physios that were just... Um, Probably giving you the odds against you every five minutes. No, do you know what? This particular nurse, like, yeah. like when I had to get... When I got my head around that I actually stopped walking and I couldn't walk and that um, getting out of bed was a, was a massive process. Like, mm. it was deep. Um, and literally... You know, for me to get out of bed, like the anxiety and the build up, because what would happen is they would come and do their ward runs um, about six. Mm. They do the, 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 the changeover. So, what they do is they do a changeover mm. and then they'd have the meetings. So, they'd, they'd have a changeover about six up to about seven o'clock. They'd have the meetings with the doctors mm. and the nurses and stuff like that and whatever. Then they come onto the ward and then you get your breakfast. And then, after that, the consultants come and see you and stuff like that. Mm. So, once you've had your breakfast, yeah. they, they want to get you out of bed, yeah. make the beds up and stuff like that. So, what would happen for me was from about 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock, I would be like on panic stations because I was thinking, because I know what it takes to literally get from A to B. Mm -hmm. And the process of getting from A to B was, was, was difficult. Mm. And... I'd have to gear myself up. So I'm literally trying to psych myself up, but I know what's coming and it's just, and it's panic. Mm -hmm. So they'd come along and go, right, okay, you ready? I'm like, right, okay. So I'd have to get them to crank the um, oxygen up because of my breathing. Mm -hmm. And then to get me from the position of laying down to hanging my legs off the bed and then from that to then get me to stand up onto the, onto like, um, yeah. onto the zimmer frame sort yeah. of thing. And then from there to turn around and to sit on a chair, that whole process took 35 minutes, 40 minutes, right? And then I had to, from that process there, I had to then, where I was so anxious and my breathing it would take me another 15 minutes to get my, my breathing back to a form of normality. Mm. And then they would turn the oxygen down. Oh, my right? God. So now you can imagine, yeah. right? I never left that, that chair because until it was as late as possible at night yeah. because I knew how to go through that process again. Hell. So I'd be sitting in the chair yeah. just literally all day just yeah. doing nothing because... There was nothing to do. Mad. Until one day, my son said to me, 
Dad, I'm going to bring your NPC up. And I was like, oh, my God. See, that there was my, my saviour. Mm. He brought that up. <laughs> he forgot to get the what's it called um, the charger for it, but lucky for me, mm. I had a back because um, it's it, it's it's a portable one that's got like a built-in battery. Mm. And, and and I was thinking, oh my god, where's, where's the charger? And he's like, has he got a charger? And I went, yeah. I went, man, you got to go and get it. And he's like, oh, I can't get it for two days. I'm like, no. So yeah, yeah. so I had to kind of. But anyway, I managed. I had about eight hours left on it, so I was like, oh, you know what? I'll just use it for a few hours, turn it off. Mm -hmm. Use it for a few hours, turn it off, mm -hmm. and then eventually come brought the charger, and that was it. Game changer. And that was one of my saviours in hospital because it gave me something to focus on and something to mm. to 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 vent and to and the, the music that I made while I was in there kind of reflected my mood. Can you listen to that music now with a with a Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, I mean I made some good music while I was in there. Yeah, yeah, but but you're right. You know, going back to it, I haven't it's actually a bit of sweet. I've, yeah. Yeah, I haven't really I've moved on from them. Mm. But now and then I'll just go back to a few of them and listen to them. Do you know what I'm saying? That must be create a sensory adventure. And, and, and the mad thing was as well, every song that I made in there, I named it after either a nurse or... Oh, God, I love that. Yeah. That shit is yeah. so good. So <gasps> a nurse or a wing that was on yeah. or just whatever it was at that particular time um, that was in... I could see some vision of... I would name it. So... That was my kind of thing that got me through um, most of my... The legend of Colt 45 in the fucking building, man. <laughs> the real champion of fucking nature. I, you know, and I can only big up, like, Blade, Dexter, Prime Cuts. You know, they, these guys were they're a real rallying force of, like, spreading information on how you were doing, mm. man. Um, yeah. It's just fucking fantastic to see you well. Man, I, 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 you know, compared to, like... Um, like when when I was in hospital, like, well, like at one point they were saying to me that like I'm gonna have CPOD, mm. my lungs are gonna be proper badly scarred, mm. I'm literally gonna be nowhere near um, fitness wise that I was prior to that, and I wouldn't say I was the fittest guy prior to that, but I was semi fit. You know mm -hmm, what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I've literally like when I was in hospital, yeah. I was so determined yeah. to break everything that I could possibly do. Mm. Like, literally, like, I remember the physio, she was going to holiday and like, I, I got talking to everyone in there. Mm. So all the nurses and stuff like that, I knew when they, you know, when they was on their next shift, mm -hmm. I knew, you know, they were going to either go and see their kids mm -hmm. or they were going to do this and do that. So I remember this physio, she was going, oh, I'm going to Portugal for like 11 days. I was like, oh, wicked. I goes, oh, you know, you're going with your family? She's going, yeah, I'm going with my, my two kids, my husband and blah, blah, blah. She went... When you when I come back, you want to be walking. You want to be no. You want to be out of your chair. And I went, I'll try. Hmm. So she was like, okay, cool. So anyway, she goes on holiday. She comes back, and um, she goes, coming in. Can you stand up yet? Within them eleven days, I stood up and walked towards her, and she was like, oh my god. Yeah. Like the, the determination that I had to to get my mindset ready, so that I could, I, you know, because I was thinking to myself, what I tell you, what done it for me was on the ward that I was on. There was mm. it was like a four bed ward. Mm -hmm. So the guy opposite me was in his like late sixties. Yeah, right? he was old. He was mashed up, mm. but he could walk backwards and forwards to the toilet. Yeah. The guy next to him was like 70 plus, mm. right? He can get out of bed mm -hmm. and sit on his chair. The guy next to me now, right, was 32 stone, right? You, you paint a picture of you know, dog right. ridden determination. To right? just, and I'm looking at these guys yeah. here and I'm thinking, I can do this. I'm fitter than all of you lot yeah, put yeah, together, yeah. right? But yet still, I'm not fitter than all of you lot put together. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm I like, do. How the hell can these guys be getting up? And I'm looking, I'm thinking, fuck this. I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, mate, I'm not having this. Yeah. And that was my determination. And then what I'd done was I set my goals like every three days. Mm. So my end goal was to walk from my bed to the shower room, have a shower and come back. Right. And incrementally you 
build up from that? So what happened was I got one of the nurses and, she, and, and I walked over to the shower and she was like, oh my God, I can't believe this. They were like, it was, it was mad. So I walked to the shower. I couldn't have a shower because it was just, I think, I, I think I'd, I'd, I'd over-exhausted myself. So I just went, right, mm. okay. So I said, can I, can, I get the zip, can I get the zipper frame back? She's like, okay, cool. So I went back and then I thought, right, I'm going to do this on my own. Mm. And I remember the day that I went in there, had a shower, I walked out, all the nurses come out and started clapping. Oh, God, it was that's deep. good. It was so deep. That's so good. And they were like, oh, my God. That, that, <sighs> oh, it, was, it was so deep, man. Yo, have you ever had that in your life? That just to me is just testament to, like, like I said, the dog-ridden determination of yeah, man, I'll just, just doing what, what you've got to get done. And since being out of hospital now, like, um, I've got a gym at home. Nice. So, which I, I feel very blessed to have. Yeah, I was going to say, because, you know, if you're listening and not watching, you know, it's kind of looking <laughs> fucking, you look tonk, man. Like, you, this man, is a beast I'm, you're, you're with him, yeah, man. No, man. I'm telling you, I have been, like, seriously, I've been in my gym three times a day now. That is fucking inspiring as So fuck. what I do is I get up in the morning, mm-hmm. right, I, I do an hour's worth of cardio. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, okay. Then what I do is, then I've got I've like a food regime as well. So I'll have my breakfast. Then I'll rest for a couple of hours. Then I'll have like a, another dip, another meal. Yeah. Then I'll leave it a couple of more hours. Yeah. Then I hit the gym and do a few weights. Then I'll leave that, have my dinner, leave that. And then around about between nine and 10 o'clock, I hit the gym again and do an hour's hours worth of cardio. Oh my god, I've been doing it in this heat as well. Dude, I'm so fucking inspired by that. You have no idea. I had Tough Tim Twist round the other yeah. day, and he's exactly the same. He's just not fucking about, mate. Do you know what? I've been I've been following him on um, Facebook yeah. and I've been watching him. It's right? beautiful, isn't it? And I've never met him before, but that's a guy I can relate to. Yeah, yeah, hundred like, percent. I'm going to connect his you guys. Spirit, his I, I, spirit. And I don't know if you guys speak. No, I've never spoken well, to him I'm ever connecting before. you two. Yeah. You two will just be like just, on a level. That's another b-boy name I love as well. Tough Tim Twist. Oh about. man, that's a that's a proper b-boy name. <laughs> I, and he's Don you know Ryder as well. Do you know what? I know, I know, I know. I've seen some of his jackets. Yeah, yeah. He's, Serious yeah, he's, he's, he's 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 got style, and um, I've been watching him. He obviously, you know, he puts stuff on yeah. um, on Facebook, but I'm always inspired by people yeah. that, you know, unsung heroes yeah. or, or people that yeah. uh, that that will go on, that will come from something yeah. and go on to do You'll something. You'll get on like a house on fire. Right. And very much like his story. I'll be watching him. I'll be yeah. watching him doing his b-boying. Right. I'll be watching him doing his footwork. It's beautiful. Uh, yeah, yeah. He yeah, put man. me in rock steady, man. I've got nothing but yeah. love for that guy. He's and, and an original. Like, yeah. Dude. And he's a hoarder. Yeah. <laughs> Big time. Oh my <laughs> god! I was just like, I was just thinking. I thought I was bad. Do you know, yeah. know something? Do you know what? Yeah. I think that's a hip hop thing. It's a hip hop thing. I'm telling you Without this now. Question. It is a hip hop thing because everyone that I know, I know another big hoarder as well. Mm. DJ Business is Billy Billy's a old hoarder. Time. Really? Oh my lord! That guy there, man, has got some serious stuff, man. It's ridiculous. I'm so proud of you, bro. Yeah. Like honestly, thank you. Thank it's you, just man. fantastic, and to hear that you're. You've got that regime and you're doing that, your leaps and bounds, you know. It's fucking great. Thank you. And I think yeah. a lot of people would take something away from that without question. Do you know what? It, for me, if if it reaches one person and mm. it inspires one person, that's good enough for me, man. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. And um, just like um, Tough Team Twist as well, because uh, he... He's he's inspiring as well, man. Like as I said, I was I've been watching him on Facebook and I've been watching him doing his b boy. Mm. I've been seeing him doing his fitness and talking about it mm. and about mental health. And you know what? I can thing. only applaud. I can only applaud that man. Yeah, man. It's the Definitely. shit. Yeah. Mm. Well, it feels like the right time to wrap it up, but uh, obviously this uh, doesn't end there. You can go and check out all the other podcasts uh, in the in the uh, catalogue. Without question, it would not have been the same fantastic collage of podcasts without you on there, brother. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. I'm blessed to be here and blessed to still be here as well. Yeah, all yeah, of that good definitely. stuff. A lot of people out there be checking in and keeping up to date with you as well. So we'll definitely, yeah, 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 I'd love to have yeah. you back at one stage or another, man. Definitely, man. My guy, Colt 45. Thank in you, the sir. Building.
Thank you. You know what it do. Killer Keller podcast. Out like in was out. I've got a damn fashion, all right? <laughs> Remember, crime don't pay, but neither do they, all right? <laughs> tell a friend to tell a friend. You know what it do, all right? Sharing is caring. People, enjoy your lives. Have a great day. And uh, don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. Stay Peace. lucky, people. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> what the-